that. Look at that. Just when she said that. I know. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome. It's time for another edition of Skip Happens, the Skip Happens podcast, along with the official country music fan club. That young lady right up there, Miss Deb Lamphere, the president and founder. And uh, this guy right over here is our guest tonight. We'll tell you all about her. He's going to tell you all about him here. Oh, in there he is. But, uh, well, you know, he's in the Northeast. <laughs> he's in the Northeast, and we were just talking without the microphones about... Uh, He's in Boston and how, because we're centered in Syracuse, and this is where we're doing the podcast from, that uh, the Orange, we just played Boston College. And um, sorry, Louie, but uh, we kicked your ass. It's all right. All right. <laughs> we needed to, though. We needed to. I want you all to say hi to uh, my new friend, Louie Bello. Louie, how are you, man? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you both for having me on. It's an honor. I appreciate it. Oh, I can hear Thank the air already. Deb, did you hear that? I did hear it. I did hear it. I love it. I love it. You know, I I wonder what people think of uh, us because, well, you're from Long Island, Deb. And of course, I'm from Syracuse and we all have our own little, Mm -hmm. I guess, way of talking. (laughs) uh, My my accent always comes out really strong when I, as soon as I get into my mother's house. uh, She gets pissed off and then it comes Mm -hmm. out. I've heard it. Yeah. Watch out. It's funny how all the accents from the Northeast, I feel like they're the most unique because you can go from one part of the state to the next and it changes. Just like that. Most, exactly. Yeah, like I feel like Southern states, like each state has their dialect like as a state, but like mm-hmm. Boston, there's different parts of, of Massachusetts. Most are like a different New York. It's like you go like 10 miles down the street and it's just a little different. <laughs> go to Brooklyn, watch out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. Just a fair warning, don't piss off Deb or else she... Pulls out that Long Island. Accent. Yeah, that does happen every once in a while. But uh, Louis Bello, Louis is a, of course, an artist. And uh, man, I'll tell you, I've been listening to the music before we went on tonight and uh, going way back to like the early 2000s. Uh, oh, wow. okay, I was a Chasing, Chasing Dream. Chasing Rainbows, Chasing Rainbows. Chasing yeah. Rainbows, that song. And, and how long ago was that? Oh, wow. That's like uh, probably 2006 or seven, maybe. <laughs> Oh, I just okay. love it. I mean, I, I've been listening to everything, and it's it's fantastic. And thank you. I don't know. I did, it's just I'm, maybe it's the mood I'm in when I hear <laughs> chasing rainbows. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. I, I, but uh, now you've done the R and B thing. You you've been around a while. You, you know what it's like. You spend some time in Nashville. I, I, you just said now you're back in Boston, at your place just outside the city. But um, it's funny because. Uh, we were talking earlier, my wife and I at dinner tonight. I just went on to maybe do a little homework, find out a little more about you because we had never met until we went on here tonight. It's pretty awesome. And um, I heard um, Rescue Me, which is a new song that's coming out. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. But I swear to God, I've heard that somewhere before. <laughs> and, and 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 it's you though. It was you. Maybe it's maybe I heard a clip. Maybe a radio station was teasing it or something along those lines. So, but I said, yeah, it's such a great song. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's that's uh, it's uh, so I wrote that with a friend of mine, um, Jason Tucker, who lives down in Nashville, and we wrote that. And we kind of like when we first wrote it, we kind of like, oh, I like this. It's gonna be cool. And we brought it to uh, my buddy uh, Corin Henley, who produces, and he started putting the music together, and we started like you know, really kind of fine tuning it. Mm-hmm. And we sent it out to a few people just to kind of get some reaction. And it's been crazy the last like four weeks yeah. since we put it up. So yeah, I, I'm ex- I'm really excited about that record. Yeah. You have every right to be really excited. You should be excited about everything you've done because it's so good. Uh, I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you. <laughs> Seriously. Was, was this one of those songs that you thought you'd write that you weren't really sure where it was going to go? It kind of was. Yeah. So, you know, I, because of, um, you know, obviously because of COVID, I was up here in Boston when we we did that right on Zoom. Um, we started that song on Zoom. I had a melody idea and a little bit of a hook, and I called him. I was like, can you jump on Zoom real quick? And we spent about an hour kind of laying it out. And then I actually went to Nashville like two weeks later. We finished it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you know, it, we just were like, I like this, you know, but it was never like, this is the one. It's just like, you know, you write a song, you're like, I really, I like it. I feel good about it. But, you know, you've blown the business so long. you. Right. you you never like put your money on one thing, but then once it was produced, I was like, oh, I really love this song now, you know? So how do you do this from afar? So you wrote the song, which to me is the easy part, but now you have to record it. You have to have 
band members and the production and all that. And you're in Boston. You've got folks in Nashville. What was your process? So I, uh, I have a studio in my house. So what I did was I recorded my vocals here and um, I featured um, Jason on the record. So because it just came out like when we wrote it and he, we were singing it, I was like, you got to be on this record. So I feature him on the second <laughs> verse. And so he recorded his in Nashville. And then when I went back down to Nashville, I cleaned a few things up and um, we had musicians in Boston. Oh, little bug, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my this, God, he's over here. He's scaring me. His water bugs are all over the place. That's okay. <laughs> that was my special effects for the show. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Not that hey, I'm, anything, afraid of bugs. I'm not afraid of bugs. Sorry. Anything no, goes. <laughs> so we had, uh, and then we had musicians up here who have studios who like cut different parts for us and actually oh. sent us the parts. So it was kind of like, it, it's an awesome collaboration, like especially um, being like being so mobile the last few years mm -hmm. and traveling all over the country, like recording one part in LA, another part in Boston and just find the right people, um, producers to make it sound the way it sounds. So it's a really fun process. So now it's all condensed if you think about it. It is, yeah. it really is. Tra traveling all over the country. Mm -hmm. I, that whole process just intrigues yeah, me, so I kind of like to inquire crazy. about that. There's nothing like there's nothing like recording the whole thing in one studio. Though, I'll say that. Mm -hmm. Like, there's nothing like really like just getting into the song as a group in the studio and and just recording each part. I mean that that, that experience, you know, I, I'm it's 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 amazing. That's but, the best. Yeah. But it is awesome to be able to cut like a full record. Um, between your house and people and other parts and have this amazing record come out. So there, there is some something cool about that as well. Yeah. yeah, no, it's cool both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe one way, you know, being there is a little bit cooler. Just a little bit. Just yeah, it's a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the technology we have and the way we've been doing everything lately, and I've said this a million times, it's we've learned to do things differently and a new way of doing it. By the way, I love the tat. On your arm. On oh, the, oh, yeah. This saw that. I, here I go. I just changed the subject, Deb. That's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Oh, that's, wow. Yeah, we're talking about that. that. And then what uh, is that? That's up. So it's, uh, I don't know. How can I do this? Oh, I'm the opposite way. Oh, this way. There but, you go. I got that a, is cool. A cassette tape, which is my first because I'm old. That's the first thing I released. I used to sell cassette tapes out of the trunk of my car. <laughs> um, and I have my piano and I have my lyrics for one of my songs and an old school mic because. I grew up with Frank Sinatra when I was a kid, so I love the old schools. Oh, look at oh, look at that! There we got matching ones. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Just, I know with the camera and all, but yeah, yeah it's there it's there. That's yeah. awesome. Well, I'll it's just it. pass a comment that you really don't look old enough to be having to deal with cassette tapes. I will say that. I, I really appreciate that. I really appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> I'll ask you offline how old you are. I'll send you. I'll send you a gift. I'll find okay. something. I thank you. Okay. <laughs> I got I got so many boxes of cassette tapes I probably have in my back room here. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all that long ago, Deb. Let's think about. I it. know. I don't. I'm, oh, time went, goes way too uh, fast. Were you around for eight tracks? Um. So my first uh, recording when I was a kid, my father had an eight track in the basement, and he brought me and my buddies in there, and we recorded on an eight track. So I love it. I love it. So I remember. I knew what it was. Yeah. Exactly. You have an eight track. Of course, you know, then we had the cassettes and then the CDs came out and then, you know, everything's on a thumb drive now or just, you know, it's just amazing. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. But uh, going back to what I was saying, I mean, doing doing things so differently now, but maybe that's a good side of the pandemic. Not obviously the pandemic is not good, but we've learned how to do things differently and we've made it easier for ourselves, I think, uh, learning some of this. Would you agree? I, I would totally agree. Yeah. I, I love the fact of um, even just doing like it pushed my boundary. So, I mean, I was supposed to be touring in Europe when this hit and um, doing some small spot dates and I couldn't, and all my gigs got canceled, like my major, like private events and like, but I, I, I started figuring out ways of using um, the Zooms and the Facebook lives more because I did that before, but it was almost just like an extra you did. And now you had to do it because you're like, I need to make some money and I need to do mm -hmm. shows for my fans. So you find these creative ways of not just, maybe not just singing an hour show, but like talking with them, answering questions and then doing songs. So you find these ways of using the, the internet to really activate your fans. I think that was a big thing for me. I really like reactivated fans that maybe weren't really engaged as much, you know? Mm -hmm. no. so. Exactly. Um, no, to me, it's great because you become, you're more personal. You're, you're, you're a little more one-on-one -on -one with them, even if it's a setting like with the FaceTime, uh, 
Facebook, whatever, because they can pop in their questions and say hello from Syracuse, yeah. New York. You know, they really feel like they're interacting. Whereas when you're on the stage, yes, we're there and we're into it, but we can't really talk to you. So I agree. Totally agree. I think. You know, I think no matter what I do with the radio side or Deb does with the business side of things or you being a, an artist, a musician, that uh, with the computer, we took so much for granted for so long mm -hmm. and really didn't. It was there. and We knew how to just basically do everything. And then when all this happened, we were forced to do mm -hmm. for you probably to make a living. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm fortunate enough to still have my job working in radio. And I still, you know, for me, it's entirely different. But for you as an artist, um, you you can't pay your bills unless you're playing or, you know, I'm just saying you got right. No, a hundred percent. I almost like equated to like my mom, like my mom's, you know, she, she just got email like three years ago and then she's on Facebook now. And it's like, it's like almost like we, we were forced to find the buttons that my mother finally found. Like, Oh, what is send this? What is this? <laughs> That's a all really these, good example. All these little <laughs> hidden buttons that no matter what age you were, you never really mm -hmm. just investigated. But my, it was like being my mom finding Facebook first. Oh my God, you can put a picture on. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> put this cool on, you know? Louis, is that you? Do yeah, I, exactly. you yeah. This is amazing. Exactly. No, I hear you. I hear you. And uh, it doesn't matter who you are. We've all learned how to do things differently and, better so mm -hmm. that's a good thing so yeah let's go back when did you i'm um, obviously you're no youngster but you're not old either all right when did you first start playing when did you know when did you find out that music was going to be your thing let's let's take go it back a few <laughs> days. just a few days two days we'll go to the time machine um well years years yeah, years uh so so when i was a kid uh my father so my father was in a nine-piece horn band oh, wow. yeah he was a lead singer and um in Boston, and when like Tower Power, um, uh, who the group Chicago used to come to like Boston, Fire, Chicago, yeah. my father's Fire. band would open up for them in Boston. They had a really big following in Boston. So this was before I was like born. Like when I was born, it was like the tail end of it. No. But so he was always into music, and actually he had an opportunity to go to Japan with his band, and they had a, a deal over there. But he didn't go because I was being born. He chose to stay home and be a and that was his choice, you know, so that everything fell apart. But he kept doing music and he just had us around music. And I always just had an appreciation for, you know, we played records. Like all he played was records all the time, every day. And it was every kind of music. Dolly Parton to um, to Michael Jackson to Stevie Wonder. So it was just like this eclectic mm -hmm, music mm -hmm. sound around me. But I never really wanted to be a performer. I just I just liked music. And literally when I was like 15 or 16, there was a lot of groups in Boston uh singing groups and growing up and we realized i realized like wow you could pick up girls if you sing I was like, <laughs> so, it's yeah, true though it's so true i would go to these shows that my buddies were in and i'd be like I used to make fun of those people and i was like oh my god look at the way those mm -hmm. girls are looking at that guy mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. so we just started we literally after basketball games in the court we used to start doing harmonies and that's when my father was like well listen if you really want to do harmonies i can teach you so he taught me and my friends how to do harmonies and we record them on the a track and that kind of gave me the bug. And I just, ever since then, it was like experiment with music and making records and writing. And it was yeah. Wow. Having your dad involved like that. I mean, what, what a, just an advantage, to, you know, to, to have somebody right there. You want to learn? I'm going to teach you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You looking around for somebody to teach you. Dad, got to love it. Got to love it, brother. And oh, great cool. bands yeah. too. I mean, Tower of Power is so very hard to go. Oh. One of my favorite songs of all time. Earth, Wind, and Fire. I mean, it's just the whole, all their music's awesome. Anything with brass. Anything with brass. Yeah. Chicago. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of the group Chicago. Well, my favorite, my favorite song is, uh, was, uh, was it uh, Saturday in the Oh, yeah. It was, it was the 4th of July. Yeah, dude, that song, the way, da, 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 that yeah. arrangement, the horns, it was oh, like. God, it's so good. Listen to that all day long. So good. And you know, we're, we're talking about the horns, and, and, and Deb, I think you've heard this too, that there's a lot of that in today's country music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're hearing a lot more horns and kind of, uh, yeah, you still get the traditional sound. You'll, you'll hear a steel or, you know, a. Uh, a banjo or something, but you also hear the horns and how they're bringing it all together. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love the direction the country music's going now. Um, Let me ask you about that. Okay. Yeah, so I, I, and I know you mentioned before, so I've done, so when I first started, like I was really more into like the R and B pop as mm -hmm. a younger artist. 
And um, I think it's just what was, you know, fashionable up here in the Northeast. I mean, it was just, you know, you got mm-hmm. New York right down the street, you know, a couple hours away. And so it's like that vibe that, that, that I fell in love with. Um, and, uh, and I think it's because I grew up with a lot of acapella groups and when the R and B artists like boys to men and all, then they took that acapella to another level. And so I really fell in love with that music, but I was thinking about 10 years ago, I started going to Nashville and I started falling in love with the vibe in Nashville, the, the songwriting. Mm-hmm. And, um, I was at South, uh, South by Southwest. Yes. And yeah. I, so I played a couple shows there on the smaller stages and I, I went into the Spotify tent I don't know, maybe this was like seven years ago uh, and I saw Sam Hunt. And when I saw Sam Hunt, I was like, who is this guy? Because his music had country, but it was just a little different. Yeah. And I felt like I connected to it. Um, And like Thomas Rhett started crossing over with some like pop type of stuff. And it just made me dive deeper in a country and I got more of an appreciation. I said, I wanted to mesh this. And ever since then, it's been, I've been in that country lane um with my music um and i just really love i i just love the reaction the fans are awesome in country music i just gotta say nothing that. like it i i would mm-hmm. agree no. in my angle it's there's nothing like the the country listeners for me and of course the country fans for you so dedicated so passionate oh, it's awesome it is mm-hmm. it's awesome I love it. very loyal they're very very loyal yes so learning that yeah, I saw um, that uh, you did a cover of a Sam, Sam Hunt song. I was on YouTube yeah. and I was like, you know, playing around trying to get a good feel of, you know, what you do and who you are. And yeah. I said, oh, look at this. It's a cover of a Sam Hunt tune. And this mm-hmm. was pretty cool. And you did a great job with it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I appreciate it. And it's funny you say that because like um, I've been I've been debating this like branding wise because I'm big into the marketing and business end of music, too, as well, because obviously, you know, it's the only way I'm going to mm-hmm. keep being mm-hmm. relevant, you know, so I can pay the bills at home. So um, and enjoy myself because I get still like I don't like just to do the same thing all the time. I think I have undiagnosed ADD. I'm doing. <laughs> I hear stuff. you. I'm the same way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like you know you vacuum in one minute, you putting up pictures the next. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> I'm like, like too well. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. But but I, I but I, that's great. It is. Yeah. It, and it's I think it's a good thing for artists um, because that's what keeps us you know sharp you know and. Mm-hmm. When you mentioned YouTube and I was looking at my YouTube the other day and I was like, there's so much stuff from, I think I've been on YouTube since it was created and there's so much stuff that's old and I, I feel like I need to take a lot of stuff off because it's not, even though it's a part of me, it's mm-hmm. not what I am now. Like, I mean, right. so it's like from a branding side, I know a PR guy would come to me and say, dude, you need to wipe off half that stuff. Right. And right. I, mm-hmm. It's been hard for me to get rid of the old stuff like way, way back. And it's like, it's so yeah, I know. I, I, I get the- you're gonna have to make one of those uh movie clips with, with pieces of your past. That'd be cool. Then you can have that on there. Louis, this is- way back when, Louis, yep, yeah, yep. it all started here. <laughs> and then you have that voiceover for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there yes, you go. Work, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. I love it. I love it. So, I, I mean, so obviously you've been doing this a while and uh, going back and forth that you said the last 10 years hitting, hitting up Nashville and all that. And uh, you do like the writer's nights or do you go out to any of the rounds or? Is there- yeah, I, I do. I go to rounds all the time. Um, and, and it was actually one of the things that pushed me as a writer. So back in, I think it was like 2002, I had a Sony publishing deal. And right. um, I I screwed that up royally. And I'll always admit that only because of my my ignorance to the business. And that's what like, got me on the whole business tip after that is I got signed to a publishing deal um, and the home the headquarters for my publishing deal was Sony in California. I was in Boston, just had a kid, almost like my, it was like a mirror image of my dad's life when he had an opportunity and he oh. did the wrong things. It was really weird. Mm-hmm. I had a child and my child was here um, and I, I just had got like divorced from the mom, um, her mom. And I was like, All right, I can't move out to Cali but I'll just write with people here and send my stuff out to Cali and quickly realize that if you are not in their faces every day, yeah. they're not putting you with anybody. That's a good writer. They're not, they're not helping you. They're like, basically, yeah, you work for Sony, but who are you? Like, you know, right. I, I, but when I, so I kind of got stale with my writing and I just was in this pocket here in the Northeast and just thinking like, Oh, my writing's good. And I, I had a meeting down there once and the guy played my records and um, it was the head of Sony publishing. Jim Valutato was his name. And he looked at me and he's like, I really like you, kid. Let me play you some real records. And that was like <laughs> uh, most that was like most yeah. beating feeling. Wow. 
Yeah. It was just like, it hit me. So when I went to Nashville and started getting in rooms with writers and I was like, but it made sense. I remembered that moment with him and it took years before the connection was made in my mind. But I was like, oh, wow, this is what he means. Because now I'm in the room with these really good writers and they're pushing me. And it's just like, it's, it's, Nashville changed my whole outlook on music in general. Mm -hmm. So for writing. So I was going to just say that seems actually like a scene from a movie where the person wants to go and make it big and, you know, do the songs and the records and the label is like, sorry, you know, there's other one, you know, this is not your, your thing or whatever. And then, but what a learning experience that came from that. And like you were saying, you don't recognize that till a couple of years later. And in a way you're kind of thanking him. Absolutely. Because you publicize the story, you talk about it very open and he's taught you a very valuable lesson. I wish he was still working there. He stepped down a couple of years ago because I, I obviously lost touch with everybody there, but I would love to now because I feel like I'm at the top of my game writing now and mm -hmm. I still have a lot to do, but I feel like night and day from that time in my life. And I'd love, yeah. to, I'd love to replay that meeting now and walk in with all my friends. <laughs> and I feel like at least one or two, he'd be like, oh, that's it, kid, right there. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what a feeling, though, somebody to say, okay, kid, let me play you some real music. I, lo I love that story. Yeah. I just, yeah. the, those words and everything, it's perfect. Yeah. Oh, kid. All right, kid. <laughs> well, you know, you know, it's funny, the reason, so he, he, we were joking before we started getting into like that business end of it, you know, he was trying to break the ice and I was, and my, I brought my, one of my producers with me and he was from Boston and we always say kid, I say kid to people who are older than me. It's just a thing up here. We always say kid, hey kid, okay. you know, so it's like a kid thing. So I, he was, I don't know if he was playing off that or where he said it, but it, it was, I was like, he just saw me kid. Like I'm not that young, but then I realized <laughs> I've been throwing that word around the whole time. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Cause he said like, Oh, who'd you write this with? Oh, this kid back in Boston who produces all oh, this kid over here, you know? So for him to say that, it's kind of like, Oh, great. Yeah. Is that like, is he talking down to me? Is he trying to help me? What is he doing? You know? <laughs> well, one of these days you'll have to track him down, send him an email or a Facebook yeah. message or something. Cause I'm sure he would love to hear that you're telling that story and what he's actually been able to do for you. That's a cool so. idea. I didn't think of that. I'll have to, I'll have to go and Google. Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, that so. just ditto to what Deb said. That That is awesome. Mm -hmm. What is your uh, your process when you do write? What is, uh, you know, what goes through your mind? What are you writing about? Or what? It, talk to us about your process. I try to base everything I write on an experience I've had or I've had with somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, I think... Being divorced once, I'm on my second marriage now. I have a um, 17 year old that's about to go to Louisville just to cheerlead for uh, mm -hmm. Cardinals. Yeah, next year. And we'll uh, Louisville this week. So, anyways, go ahead. Oh go yeah, is it Louis? <laughs> just say. I know we're all gonna. I'm gonna be. We're, we're gonna be enemies in sports no matter where we go, right? Boston, <laughs> Louisville. <laughs> I can't win. I can't win. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I have, well, that's okay. No, I have. I've heard she's going to college, and I'm about in two months to have a new baby. So everybody's like, oh, "You're crazy!" Oh Congrats. Do you know, boy or girl? We don't know. We're going to be surprised. We're going to be the surprise thing. I love it. I love Yay. it. Congratulations to you. See what happens. My wife's inside the house right now, folding boy clothes and girl clothes, and then neutral clothes, and just got like, because we don't know. Oh wait, when's the baby due? May eighth. Oh, May. I thought for some reason two weeks registered with me, and I'm thinking, oh, we're going to be in the middle of a podcast, and you know, before you had the bug flying, now you're going to get a phone call. Oh, we need to go to the hospital. That would be so, awesome. That would be so cool. That, I'll, I'll that would be back very back. cool. I'll follow you in the car and get the whole ride. <laughs> so happy for you. That's cool. And I guess if that's going to happen, this is a good time for that to happen. Yeah, yeah. no, it's definitely yeah. here. You're not out performing or on the road or doing some, you know. Yeah, it's it, it is it's really good time and and I mean there's no, I you can't I guess you can try to plan for a baby um but sometimes like it just just happens and you know like like my my friend said to me you guys weren't social distancing during this pandemic I said I, is it obvious? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people were not social distancing. Yes. They were supposed to be having this big baby boom now. I bet. So just gonna say you know what the name of this podcast is. Sk exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. yeah. So. <laughs> Absolutely, a hundred percent. But that, like that kind of stuff in my life, like the the um, you know, the emotional pieces that go along with it. Um, it, I, I really try to draw on on just real life experiences, and even if it's not me, 
I'm around so many people um, in my life that I, I, I pick up on things and I try to like create the main outline of the story and I'm good at melodies. Melodies is, my, is really my forte. So I, I create that melody and that idea for the concept of the chorus. And, and if I'm not if not vibing off of finishing it, I always, I, 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 I love collaborating. So I have different people that I know are good at different styles and I'll call them on and I'll say, hey, listen, I need you to help me finish this. But I'll always have like that outline and that, that focus first. And it's just, and then the collaboration process happens and then, you know, you make a great record. What does like um, the 17 year old think of what you do? Well, when she needs money, she loves me and she thinks <laughs> it's the best. When, I know, I get you. Yeah, when she's yeah. hanging out with her friends and her friends are all like, oh, can your dad's your dad's cool. And I saw his video. She'll be like, yeah, he thinks he's cool. Like, you know, that's <laughs> that's the that, age. Yeah. But she she's awesome. she's she's awesome. She's a competitive cheerleader. She's very she's a cool. kid, worked hard. She's been wanting to go to this college since she was literally like six years old because they yeah. have like one of the biggest cheerleading programs in the country, national titles and and she got in and I was very proud of her. She set her mind on it and you know, so she got in. So she's, she makes me proud, but she inspires me, you know, to, to keep, cause I want to show her that no matter how old I get, that all these experiences that I'm having are just like, they're part of this journey that yep. makes me a better person. And I want her to just be like, just push for whatever you want. See daddy mm -hmm. old and he's still doing this and doing well with it. So dude, you <laughs> You're not that old. Stop saying that. I don't uh, think you're that old. you don't look it anyways. Well, thank and, you. I appreciate it. I appreciate you know, it. It's I gotta, the beard. It covers up all my, my yeah. wrinkles. You know what? I mean, you're talking about your age. And if you are a little bit older, your beard's not gray. Most guys gray out in the beard. So I gives it away a little bit, unless you're using just for men. Well, listen, I'm not going to say I am, and I'm not going to say I'm not. <laughs> just put it this way. I don't use a lot of it. <laughs> there you go. Just a little touch up here. I just touch it up a little. I do touch it up a little yeah. bit because my grays. Are, so I've had a gray patch in my hair. Oh yeah. Okay, a little bit though. You don't. Oh yeah. I've yeah. Had, but I've had that since I was twenty. So, okay. so. I, for some reason, I had it, and I always had like, I grew this beard two years ago. I had vocal surgery, so I had a um, major vocal surgery, and. I was so depressed not to take it to another way, but, but I was so depressed that I just, I let my beard grow. It was like out to here. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to sing again, but my wife said like, Oh, you look really good with a full beard. It was like the only saving grace in it. I'm like, Oh, okay. So I started trimming it up and I'm like, everybody was like, I like your beard. I'm like, never going to leave me. There you go. That's you. That's I, you. Man. Yeah. That's you. And uh, I mean, not, we're not putting a negative spin on this, but you as a performer an artist, uh, having to have vocal surgery. I mean, that had me like, Oh my God, what, what now am I, am I still going to be able to do what I love? Or am I going to have to like hang that up and go drive truck or something? It was, it, it was uh, one of the worst, like the lowest points. Yeah. Um, that's when I really felt like I, I started like understanding what depression really was because it, it just hit me. Yeah. I didn't know. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't talk for three months. Like literally couldn't yeah. really talk for three months. Um, I was so afraid, even I after it was like, that. I was afraid to open my mouth because I, what they did on my surge, my, my throat, when I knew what it was, I'm like, I don't want to move. I don't want to, mm -hmm. cause if this doesn't heal right, what happens? You hear the horror stories. Right. right. Thank God I did it now. Um, as opposed to like 15 years ago, cause the technology is so good. Um, the doctors up in Boston are amazing. Um, yes. this, mm -hmm. Dr. Tom Carroll, he was awesome. That's and. Fun. I just did, I did months of um, vocal therapy and I probably say like uh, eight months after my surgery, I did my first show and it was only for 15 minutes. That's all I could do. Yeah. I would have been a nervous wreck. Oh, it was awful. Knowing that taking something, if you're an athlete and you had to get surgery on your leg, you know, you're a yeah. performer getting surgery on your throat. I just, so was it mandatory? What exactly was going on that you had to have a surgery? So one, so I started this um, residency up here um, in Boston, uh, I forget how many years ago it was. It was like 2000 and maybe 12 or something like that, 13. And we had this really cool residency. Um, we had like, it was like two or 300 people every Wednesday night. It was for like, we, we did it for, um, almost a year and a half straight. Wow. And, uh, it was just really fun. We had like, like the, the governor of mass used to come to this, like legislature. We had like, I always say we had criminals, cops, athletes. They used to come and hang out this show. And I would bring people from, I would fly people from Nashville in as special guests, um, LA, New York, friends I met. 
and they would be a special guest and I would play, I would be the main band and I would do my originals, some covers. We'd have a dance party. It was just a fun night. But during that time, I got so many opportunities from that. So I did that those year and a half, two years, I did probably 110 shows each year. Oh, wow. And okay. so after about close to the second year, I lost my voice and we just thought it was, you know, it's cold or whatever. It took about a month. It came back. I was good. And I lost it again. So I went and saw this guy and he told me that I burst a, um, a blood vessel on my throat. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> he said there was two options. He said you could do a therapy and we could try to work with it, which we tried at first. And he said the second option was surgery. Um, and I went on a European tour knowing that this could kill my voice because I'd never been to Europe before. And I had the opportunity to go um, to do private gigs in Spain, um, an island off the coast of Africa, Madeira, and then go to London. Wow. How could how could I pass as this kid from Boston that used to hang out in the corner singing? I'm I'm like, I'm in. Yeah. I, I can do this. I don't blame you. It's a risk, but I don't blame you. I, I just figured, you know, and, and it was great, but I came back from that and I could like I, I made it the last show, I made it, I did all right, but I came back, I couldn't talk. So uh, I had no choice. I said, gotta do it. And um thank God though, like it's it's back. Um, mm -hmm. I do a lot of things different in my old, my older age, as I say, because I've learned, like when I was a kid, I, I never warmed up. I learned to sing for my dad and just watching my favorite artists. So going to vocal therapy the last couple of years, learning tricks and techniques to warm up. It is just, mm -hmm. if I had only learned those like six years ago, seven years ago, mm -hmm. but you know, you learn. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, it's, it's a, it's like when we're exercising and working out, we need to warm up our bodies before we can just get in there and start doing all that, yeah. you know, heavy lifting, so to speak. So I thought I was invincible. Um, I was yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're just loving what you're doing and just, you're right. You think you can just get out there and do it. In reality, as we get older, it's not as easy and we need to take good, better yeah. care of ourselves. So that's all, mm -hmm. yeah, you know? Yeah. It's very cool. Well, it's not it inspired a lot of songs, but it, ins it inspired me to really focus on, on what I was doing with my life. Cause I did think about, mm -hmm. Like, oh, man, like, what, what am I going to do? I went to school for, um, for illustration and graphic design. Um, I taught part-time for, for years as I was touring. So I'd go to Nashville, like, three or four days. I'd come back. I'd be teaching. So I had, like, all these options, but none of them really interested me because it was, like, a forced option. I think when you're forced in an option, you get a little more depressed. Yeah. Uh, you're like, I don't want like this. Yeah. And I don't. I didn't want to dig holes anymore. I, I mean, I did like every job under the sun. I did construction, did roofing, did. I, I mean, everything. Yeah, yep. And I just was like, I don't want to be doing that, breaking my back anymore. And, um, but mm -hmm. th thankfully, you know. Yeah. So this is all you do now is write and perform. Being I, an artist. I do. I mean, I went back to because of the pandemic. I went back to teaching part time. Okay. Uh, well. Because I I do like teaching. Um, I teach art. You know, I teach and that's what you teach. Okay. Yeah, I teach art and music. So I, I um uh in Boston public schools. So I teach a uh, course at the school I'm at and I teach um art. So I do that part time and it was a savior. So it was almost like God was telling me something like yeah, all those skills you learned when this thing came, I actually was able to still keep my lights on and pay the mortgage and yep, yep. You know, so it was a good thing. A blessing. That's awesome. If somebody's looking to get a hold of your music and find out more about you, of course, they could go to louisbello.com that I have on the screen there. But um, what is available on your website? So, so if you go to my website, it has all my social media, like my Instagram, um, my Facebook links, has videos, um, booking promos, a little, hist little back history on my about page and my EPK. Um, I do a lot of my marketing on Instagram. It's become like Instagram and TikTok now. So I was gonna, that was going to be my next question. You're pretty much social media of choice. So, I mean, everybody's going with TikTok or Instagram uh, pretty much right now. So I try to. I mean, my, my daughter gets embarrassed by my TikToks. I think they're funny. <laughs> but I'm just, you know, that's me. I, I'm just a goofball. So it's kind of fun. But uh, my Instagram is like my my main thing because I go Instagram live a lot to connect with people and. And then we'll do like little private like zooms with some fans and things like that. So, but you know, uh, I like about TikTok is it brings your personality out. It you, does, right? You know, I mean, you like to have fun, and you can do that on TikTok. Talk, and you know, I mean, your daughter may not want to look at it, but a lot of other people will. 
I've done friends. <laughs> I've done TikTok um, TikToks with her friends, and she still will not do a TikTok with me. <laughs> so Indeed. give her a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. I know, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And believe me, it's going to go by fast. Before you yeah. know it, dude, it's going to be up in her 20s. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Boy, you're going to have two phases of life. You got the one that's grown up and then one just starting out. I mean, you're just going to be. It's scary. I'm, I'm, I, I, feel, I feel a song coming. I feel a song coming. I don't know if it's going to be called I'm Scared to Death or what. I don't know what yeah. the song's going to be, but. You know. <laughs> yeah, you could it's gonna be a song about that. That's that's pretty awesome. I'm happy, but, you know, it's just, it's, it's. I know. Honest is there like some people will just make believe. Oh, it's the best thing in the world. I think it is going to be the best thing in the world, but I'm not going to lie. I'm very like, how do you put a diaper on? Like, how do you? <laughs> it's hold not it? that. It's it's not getting any sleep anymore. Yeah. But I, I don't know if we ever sleep anymore. I'm still up worrying about my kids, and they're all older. So yeah, it's just the way my it kids is. are out of the house, and we still worry about them. Well, I have one yeah. son here, but uh, he'll be with us forever. But um, my three daughters are gone and they've given me eight grandkids so oh that's awesome congrats it's amazing. You know, yeah it is amazing and you wait till that day comes because it's mm -hmm. you like oh i'm too young to be a grandpa you know i don't want to be a papa or you know now he's got time yet <laughs> he's well, got he says he's old <laughs> but, well yeah but his daughter's only 17 so i know we'll give her a little bit of time. Well, you know it but that first that one that moment the first mm -hmm. one calls your grandpa or papa it's like wow yeah <laughs> You know, you, no, you kind of have mixed emotions, I guess. You're like excited, it's cool, and but then again, you go, God, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, I have one quick question: Are you teaching at the school that your daughter went to by any chance? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Okay. No. I was gonna say. Now I don't know. She's still in school now. She's a senior. She's a senior, yeah. So they haven't really been able to go to school. I mean, right. a, lot of, a lot of places, most places outside of her town that she that her main residence is. She, she lives in like two towns over. Every other school is back at school, but for some reason, their school district has been weird about it. So she <laughs> she unfortunately lost mm -hmm. out a lot this year, like most, like a lot of people did. But mm -hmm. I just I feel, I feel bad for her because all the other school districts are playing their sport teams. They're doing all this stuff and some reason she's not so you know i just told her to keep her head up and uh you know next year she's going to be in louisville hopefully chairing yep. and yep yep right things ahead you know exactly there you go yeah so what uh what is going on there with the pandemic in in your neck of the woods so to speak i i know here things are starting to open up again a little bit not all the schools but uh still slowly we got the vaccine we have all that going on and you know trying to get everybody taken care of at least here in new york yeah I mean, it's 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 pretty much the same. It's yeah. the same up here. Um, it's you know, it's 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 pretty it's pretty open. I mean, we had a couple like shutdown type things, but never never fully. It was more like this, which was, I'm actually happy I moved ten minutes out of Boston because Boston like shut down like crazy, but everywhere outside of Boston was was still serviceable. Mm -hmm. You know, stores and restaurants for the most part. Um, obviously, they hurt. Like the restaurants were hurting like crazy. Right. There, I'm mm -hmm. sure there too. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, I try to do my best to go out and because um, I had COVID back in March uh -huh. um, when it first happened. So I felt I, I felt more comfortable than most people because, you know, I just I just felt comfortable. I just knew what it was. I knew what I had. So I, I went and try to help out as many restaurants as I could and just you know, do what I could for small businesses and stuff like that. But, yeah, I mean, things are starting to get back to whatever the new kind of normal is right now, you know. The new norm, it's whatever. It is. Right? I think uh, this is part of it. What we're doing here tonight, but yeah. mm -hmm. but I like this because I don't because like unless I was touring, I I would have never met you guys. So like this, no, is exactly. You know, exactly. We do three or four of these a week, and uh, we've been doing it for well over a year, and we've met so many great artists, so many great people. Um, mm -hmm. Just you know, getting into their lives a little bit, they get into ours, and. Uh, it's it's fun and it's informative and it gives our viewers a chance to see that you're you know yeah you're an artist but you're also a real person and uh, you know you live a life just like we do or they do so you know you got a 17 year old you got a baby coming you've got the, you've got so much going on just like anybody else and your job is you're a songwriter and an artist my job I'm a radio guy Deb's job she vacuums her living room. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I think her, that doesn't I think her husband does that. <laughs> he does actually. 
<laughs> have, you been, have you do any um have you done any facebook shows or anything like that um you know logged on and try to do something online yeah we've done we've done a few uh, we, at the beginning i did more facebook shows so okay. I, I was lucky in the summertime this past summer because um uh there's a place i don't know if you know uh, uh cape cod in massachusetts oh yeah outside of boston so uh, I lucked out and got a couple summer residencies during the pandemic because the weather was great. And, um, mm -hmm. and so I was doing a lot of Facebooks up till then. And then I just started playing live and I did a lot of private backyard parties throughout the summer. So mm -hmm. you know, not the same money that was before, but at least it was, it was good. It was decent. Okay. you know. So, yeah. so then I started doing Facebook lives again back in like November, December. So, and, and I'll continue to do them for the next couple months and, and come on and do like Instagram lives and things like that. And, um, it's hard. I feel bad. Like as an artist, I, I feel bad sometimes because a lot of my fans, people are hurting. So when I go on to try to ask them to support, it's just, it's just my nature. It's like, I feel bad. So like a lot of times I end up not really putting my Venmo on sometimes and just kind mm -hmm. of just doing shows for people, right, um, right. you know, and not a great business tactic. And I know this, I'd never recommend that to another artist, but <laughs> just knowing people, mm. it's just sometimes I'm like, let's just do the show guys. And, that's, that's so people can enjoy the music, you know. It is it is a catch twenty two yeah. because you know what kind of position you're in, they know what kind of position they're in, but they know what kind of position you're in. Right. So it's just a matter of, like you said, it's sometimes you do it and sometimes you don't. And I think fans appreciate that. So this the way the times that you do do it, you're not doing it all the time. So I think people are more compelled to contribute at that point. Absolutely, absolutely. So, but you have to do it. I yeah, totally agree. Right. Yeah. So your your <laughs> your background, you know, we talked about that R and B before and all that stuff. But you much prefer to do what you're doing now. You you, you know, with the Nashville and more of a country feel, but a today's country feel. Yeah. To speak and so that that's what you want to do. Yeah, that's that's my um. It's really I become so passionate about it, like the the lifestyle and like just the, the I don't know. There's just it's something to hit about. It's that's cool. Like, laid back you know growing up in the city it was all concrete and asphalt you know and i i i obviously i traveled a lot of places i was like i so i played hockey um like when i was younger so i got to travel like canada and all over the country playing hockey and stuff like that so i saw other parts of the country i was blessed and um so i, I started seeing that when i was younger but it wasn't until i really started venturing out when i was older and, and really experiencing those things mm -hmm. as like uh like my early 20s mid 20s that I just felt that vibe. And when I really went to Nashville, I was like, I love this. Like, yeah. you know, you do kind of fall in love with it, right? Yeah. We, we did. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're missing it. We, I know Deb goes there quite often. I get, I get there when I can. And, uh, she's got some business there. Plus her son lives there. And, uh, oh, cool. you know, just, uh, me with the radio thing, something I've been doing a lot of years that, uh, Nashville is a big part of my life and the artist and everybody, you know, along those lines. Uh, if you could sit, Louis, if you could sit down and chat with somebody right now, any any major country artist, have a conversation with them. Who would that be? I think it would be Johnny Cash. Uh, I say, and I say that. Well, is it somebody alive or? Uh, well, alive? I, I understand the Johnny Cash thing, and I, you know, obviously Johnny's long gone, but. Right. He'll never be gone, but he's gone. Um, Some, somebody that's somebody that's alive. If you could sit down right now with somebody that is alive and kind of pick their brain a little bit, who would that be? That's a hard question. Let me see. Um, there's, there's so many. There's so people many there. people. Um, I, you know, all right. You know who I would say like right now to sit down with? I would say Sam Hunt. I knew it. I was gonna guess. I knew it. it. I was waiting for that yeah. to come out. Because well, you think about like, because like the, the tradition is so runs so deep in Nashville, yes. mm -hmm. the greats, mm -hmm. you know, and so you think about who's, who's wisdom, like from the, from a great, you know, legend, but then you think about, well, for, but whose wisdom would you be able to really use today with your own stuff? And I think he just keeps putting out really good music yep. and I just love his music. Mm -hmm. Yep, I knew you were going to say that. I was just waiting for it to come out of your mouth. Yeah, yeah, I know. If you didn't, I was going to go, wait a minute, I think, yeah, you know, I was thinking Sam Hunt for you or somebody else. I just think you could totally relate to him. Yeah, exactly. In a, a, lot of, a lot of aspects. Well, and I think, honestly, it's like sometimes when you go to interviews and people ask you that question, I think the the 
the PR artist side of you starts to think like, well, who would sound the best if you told this person you would talk, you know, want to talk to in your mind, you start thinking, but in reality, yeah, that's the person I would want to say, Hey, can we grab a coffee or a beer or whatever? Mm -hmm. And just talk. That's uh, awesome. That's awesome. I'm sure that will happen. Yeah. Someday. You know, we've been talking right. to Louis Bello tonight. You can uh, find out about Louis if you go online, louisbello.com, as you can see on your screen there. Uh, definitely just a great artist. Um, it's just it's why it's why what we do in our format and country is awesome because of people like Louis and, you know, bringing mixing a little bit of the old with a whole lot of the new. And uh, just, uh, for example, Sam Hunt, as we just talked about, just. You know, because he took the old Webb Pierce classic, There Stands the Glass. Yes. And put it, you know, they sampled that to, you know, into his one of his current songs. So there's a good example of how it, you go way back to Webb Pierce from, gosh, the 50s probably to, you know, to today's country. 2019, yeah. yeah. And, and I think it brings along, it brings it brings new life to, to country music because I think country music needed some new life with new fans because it, it's it's a... You know, I think for for a while there, it was very like the fan base was very closed off to only a certain uh, group of people that listen to that music. And I think when you open the doors up more, now you, you're going to just pump life into country music forever because it's just going to because it's just it's permeated through every part of our society now. And I love it. I think it's great that people who normally wouldn't like I teach in the inner city and I right. play my kids country music and right. and I, I laugh sometimes because some of the kids go, oh, my mom listens to country, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and people people listen to the country, country music in the city, but yep. I mean, yep. you know, it's, it's so it's really cool. It's really yeah. cool. That, that's awesome. I had a good friend that worked at Country 102, right? Oh, in okay. Yeah, I'm Marissa. She, she, matter of fact, I was on her podcast here last week, but she was one of their personalities here until the pandemic set in, and then they kind of you know did what everybody else did. So All right, I know. podcast as well. But um, now I totally lost my train of thought, but. Um, all right, so we can go to the website. We can get we can get your music. We can find everything out about you. They can go on. They can buy some merchandise. Hopefully, support you as well. Absolutely. Yeah, that that's cool. That's cool, dude. I just you know I can't thank you enough for joining us here tonight. Oh no worries. I I appreciate it. You know, it means a lot that people you know want to talk to me. <laughs> it's like uh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, what we've done here tonight just kind of hang on a minute because I do want to talk to you without you know, with the, with the microphone yeah. off, so to speak. But. Um, just again, thank you for joining us. I don't know if Debbie's uh, Debbie. I called you Debbie. <laughs> you did. That was like a high school kind of. I don't know. When was the last time somebody called? Sorry, Louie. When was the last time yeah. somebody called you Debbie? High school. My high school friends uh, call me. So my family calls me Deborah. My high school and kids that I grew up with. Well, you know, we're not kids anymore. They're, I'm Debbie to them. But in my adult life, I'm Deb. So it's kind of weird how you go through phases. So just go, yo, hey, yo, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, <laughs> you know, <it's>, um, <laughs> we're talking, we, we talk to artists every day, almost every day during the week, but usually this is the that time funny. that we are at CRS, the country. Yeah. Seminar. yeah. This is happening right now, would have been happening right now. Now it's all virtual. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, it gives us an opportunity to network and meet artists like yourself and everybody's trying to, you know, get to know each other a little bit and artists are trying to get their music played on the radio and, and all that. But, uh, that would be going out right now. So that's when we kind of kicked off. We started doing the podcast kind of back at CRS last year. That's right. Yeah. We did it from the lobby of the Omni. That is, mm -hmm. yes, we did. So we kicked it off before the pandemic, not even realizing the pandemic was going to happen. So, so we just that, started that foresight you guys had. See, you had, wow. yeah. I know who would have thought that's good. Deb, I didn't even think about that, but I, yeah. I just, yep. yeah. Very right, cool. uh, Louis Bello, uh, thank you so much for joining us. I don't know, Deb, did you have a couple of questions there or not? Do you want to, uh, let's see. I might have a couple of fun questions. I didn't do a whole lot. <laughs> a fun, so, okay. fun thing. Let's see. Throw them at me. Um, uh, we have a few, like, I just pick some random questions that are just nothing to do with your career. <laughs> so <laughs> let's see. What is uh, the tackiest thing that you think people do or a tacky thing that you think? Oh, wow. That's such a hard question. Tacky. Um, oh, you put me on the spot to think you're a tacky thing. Isn't that funny? I'll yeah. pick something and they'll be what like, What is a hard question, though? I, I never, I've never. Oh. 
I know what you mean though, because sometimes in the moment you think like that's tacky, but what? What? I know. It's like, eh, why are they doing that? Uh, I, don't know. I don't know if I can. What's that? I mean, so we'll pass. Well, you have an no, idea. No, I'm trying to think. I, I could think of like tacky from back in the day when when my my grandmother used to put plastic on the couches. But that was pretty tacky and walking. Oh through. yeah, I remember that. I'm gonna throw my that back. Great. Yeah, you do that all the time. I remember. Yeah, I don't know if they still do it, but that's I know not that I'm aware of. Well, no, I don't think so. Now it's other kinds of covers on the couches. If you have animals, I've seen those, but not plastic. All right. So, um, let's see. Something weird you might find written on a bathroom stall, or if you go in a restroom and some <laughs> for a good time. The call. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Joey was here. Yeah, exactly. Joey was here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see. Let me find something good. Do you have a favorite TV drama? The drama. Um, would you consider Legends, DC Legends, a drama on Netflix? A drama? I have not seen that. I don't uh, believe it or not. But you would know if it's a drama. Luc with me. There's a lot of good shows Lucifer, right now. Lucifer on Netflix. Flex is oh, a yeah. Good. Okay. It's a good show. Have you seen that, Skip? No, I haven't, but I know it's there. Yeah, it's good. It's good. There's a bunch of seasons, but it's it's definitely yeah. good. Yeah. Have you uh, have, I, talking about that? Have you binged watched anything during this? Uh, yeah, so much. Um, I just got done with the Imposters on Netflix. Okay. Um, Imposters are really good. Really good. I saw that. Yeah. Um. Let's see. What else did I watch? So we I did, did uh, Bridgerton. We did Ozark. We did oh, Ozark. Yeah, Ozark. Was, I can't wait for that to come back. So. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. Amazing. It's gonna be amazing. Um, I'm trying to think. And I watch a lot of movies. So yeah. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, we do too, actually. You know what? We saw a movie the other night, um, the one with Tom Hanks. Uh, oh, why can I never remember that title? Stories? Stories Around the World? Something? Whatever. Oh, yeah. Good. I didn't see it, but I heard it was, it was good. Was it good? It was good. I really enjoyed it. So it wasn't, it took place back in 1870, so I wasn't quite sure how I would like it, but I really, but I love Tom Hanks too, so that helps. All right. So one more. What? Uh, what's your favorite uh, pizza topping and your least favorite, worst possible pizza topping? Oh, I love grilled chicken on pizza. Mm -hmm. And my worst so good. topping would be like anchovies. Ah, that's two. For, we had someone else say anchovies yeah. too at one point. I yeah, that's definitely that's only one time. Good. And I was like, it made me just give me the skeevies. And, uh, yeah. I couldn't even put it in my mouth. Yeah. No, thank you. All right. So. Cool stuff. Uh, Louis Bello, everybody. Make sure you check him out online. Make sure you check out his music. And I have the good feeling that we're going to be hearing a lot more from Louis down the road. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. I agree. I agree. And uh, make sure you check us out on Facebook. Of course, uh, go to YouTube and uh, subscribe to the Skip Happens page. And all these videos are posted up there. And Deb's got her country music fan club info. Yeah, at Facebook, uh, like our page, uh, official CMFC. And if you get a chance, like our page, Louie, and then we can track all of your activity and get all our followers to stay on your trail. Doing that. And we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're we're all over as well. Everywhere except for TikTok, and he should be except for TikTok. He should be on TikTok. TikTok. You gotta get off the we're, gonna to, we're gonna have to check it out. I know. I'm feeling like I just don't want to learn another social media thing. But everyone, everyone's there. It's the in thing. Yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll change that, Louis. We'll make it work. All right, <laughs> Louis, you're awesome. Thank you. Peace and uh, enjoy life in Boston. And we hope to meet up in Nashville sometime soon. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of Skip Happens.